Okay. Phone lines, we're ready. We are live, everybody. So we have to be careful what we say now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll get told off. I don't, don't see John today. I'm not sure if he's around. He might be uh, having to take uh, Shannon in, but Shannon's doing okay. Um, John's swapping around a couple of sessions to look after Shannon. So uh, all our prayers with them and our thoughts with them and hope Shannon's um, feel, feeling a lot better. Yeah. I'm going to mute everybody and uh, kick off, if I may. There we go. So today, welcome to the John Lavinia Success Mastermind uh, session for the 3rd of November with me, Adrian Garner. Uh, and I just wanted to say uh, at, at the start that I'll talk uh, much as John claimed that he recently played the guitar and claims he would play the bagpipes. In other words, without notes. Uh, but I will have notes. No, I, I'm, I'm actually not telling you everything. Now, we'll have some notes because uh, memory nowadays is not what it was but I had to get that musical reference in. I also rushed out, Stuart, after your talk last week to buy some rice at the uh, local takeout restaurant. But when I got it home and put it into the jar, I started talking to it, but it said it didn't want to talk to me. So that was the end of the experiment. But I seriously, I am actually looking forward to hearing your intriguing results on that experiment to see what actually happened, because it was an amazing uh, presentation, Stuart, which still sticks in my mind a week later. Uh, what did I want to talk about amongst us all today? Well, there's a lot of it around. It's showered on us wherever we are. And the trouble is that it does tend to cling to us. It's corrosive. It's destructive. It is negativity and negative thoughts. I wanted to talk about how to combat negativity, uh, something that's come up many, many times in our various sessions and, and the specialized sessions as well. And this happens to follow on from Ego's great discussion yesterday of failure as an asset. So hopefully this will all link up. Uh, there's enough negativity around, in my view, to power the whole planet if we loaded it into a furnace, which is really where it should be, in my view. Um, if we allow it to, negativity or doubt, both from ourselves inside and from others, can actually consume all of our energy and leave us feeling completely drained. It can dissipate all of our hope, our optimism. Uh, I find it can eat away at the core of our beliefs. It can shred the whole fabric of the dreams that we've clothed ourselves in and built for ourselves. Uh, it can actually eat through whole communities, institutions, schools, and nations if it's allowed to run unchecked. It's, it's a very dangerous thing. And why is this? Why would this be? Well, really, I think we'd all recognize it's easier to be negative than to be positive, unless you're really on your guard. It requires effort. Uh, it's also easier for many people to criticize and tear down than to praise and construct and build. And also, if we're, if we're disposed to feeling jealous or dissatisfied or perhaps disillusioned, we can actually draw comfort from negativity. It tends to assuage guilt that we feel. Um, it can accord with any self-loathing that we've built up. Uh, it might justify and reinforce any lack of belief that, that we've been feeling. So it, 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 it has a, a natural affinity and gets drawn to the wrong kinds of feelings and can be stocked up. So it does actually take some determination and self-discipline and concerted action, in my view, to resist negativity. Um, it also requires awareness just to detect its very presence. It's not always obvious. And how many of us have allowed ourselves to succumb to negativity, perhaps uh, really without even being aware that we're doing so? And how many of us have allowed ourselves to, to beat ourselves up over negative circumstances? And Julia spoke yesterday about beating ourselves up. That stuck in my mind. I really would love to hear your take on that when we uh, open up the floor in a few minutes. Um, something to note also for me is that each one of us is what I would describe as an amplifier. We amplify and spread what we take in and we absorb unless we question and filter it first. So it requires a positive effort again to question and filter or risk passing something on. We know that this process of amplification works because dark forces in society everywhere try to use it. They spread alarm or alarming and corrosive stories or feelings that they know many people will just absorb and spread without question. It's actually become a new form of warfare. It's gone that far. This can change the whole mood of a school, workplace, community or nation, as, as I mentioned. And we need to bear this in mind constantly 
just in order to avoid retransmitting negativity without without thinking. In other words, to avoid the retweet, as I'll put it, of our subconscious. Uh, watch out also for the impact on us of news and media. There's plenty of negative news, it sells. So we see negative stories far outweigh or tend to outweigh positive stories. You really have to look and look for the positive side in the news. But there's always gonna be bad news and bad news reports as long as time itself, they'll never end. So we've just got to really be prepared to stand back, look to the long-term picture, the bigger picture, and try to restore some balance in our thinking. Very, very hard when we're getting bombarded constantly with these negative stories. Uh, which sometimes can make things look far worse than they are, particularly if we've read a whole string of them. So in the meantime, you know, we need to amplify the good and the harmony in the world as much as we can. That, that's something at least we can do in practice. We really can make a difference just by doing that. But not all the news is bad. Uh, the story yesterday that I happened to see last night went viral. Great little story of resisting negativity. You can watch it on YouTube. It's on there a pianist installed himself at a piano in the middle of a riot zone during a riot in Barcelona in Spain. And he played Eternal Flame by the Bangles while the rioting literally unfolded around him. He carried on playing, the rioting continued, there were people running around, fires broke out, tear gas was being fired. The riot police were deployed all around and driving up and down behind him. And he just carries on. That really uh, brought tears to my eyes. It, it just made me realize, you know, you can actually resist uh, negativity and negative things if you if you put your mind to it wherever you are and what and however bad the situation that guy really communicated with i think millions of people just by doing that and made them think made them think again hey you know what are we seeing here and how is the world and what matters but all of this destruction uh wrought by negativity really really does bother me we can spend all of us countless hours building these beautiful mind constructions cloud cap towers, as I like to call them, filled with amazing thoughts. But they, they're like a precious vase containing beautiful flowers. That's how I see it. They can easily be upturned and smashed. We need to practice not only building constructions in our minds, but protecting them afterwards. That's equally important. That's equally important as doing all the work that we're doing and all the wonderful research we're doing and the learning we're doing is protecting those beautiful thoughts and those dreams afterwards. Um, last week, during Wednesday's general session, I think it was with Glenn, uh, Caroline gave us a great example of, the, of how negative thoughts can creep in even after a win. It, it's that bad. Sometimes we're actually winning and we still have negative thoughts trying to get in. We have to actually positively resist them. And as Neil said in response to Caroline's comment, these worries aren't going to go away. They're not going to fade. We just have to deal with them. This is never going to stop. It requires real commitment and discipline. So one thing we can do, uh, which we are doing, is surrounding ourselves with positives and positive people. Immersing ourselves, for example, in this mastermind group is, is an element. Um, I mean, look at Adrian Jay. He doesn't know the meaning of the word negative. You just need to listen to the guy and, and you feel positive. Um, Ivye gave us a, a second idea a long time ago in one of these discussions. She, she said, sweep away the negative thoughts before they pass the doorstep into your mind. I think that's a fantastic image, Ivye which you've left me with, uh, not because I'm adept at sweeping, but um, it really struck a chord. It really, really did. And it, it, I love images. I can hold those in my head. Um, as we also discussed previously, we can force ourselves to say or think two positives for every negative as just a process way of approaching this. Napoleon Hill comments a lot on this factor. He stresses the need for what he calls persistence. And there's a chapter covering this. And he says we need a mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences, including negative suggestions of relatives, friends and acquaintances. He keeps telling us that that can have a, a very corrosive immediate impact on us. Also, for me, this is about generally developing mental strength and resistance to negativity. And, and that that keeps cropping up. I, I find it helpful to have images in my mind uh, to remind myself of the task. And I encountered a very powerful and memorable image at a Buddhist monastery, which we stayed at. Um, in these and other locations, monuments called stupa, S-T-U-P-A, are constructed. And these stupa take uh, various forms. Broadly speaking, they symbolize various aspects of the Buddha's life and journey and, and of the, um, the, the Buddhist thinking. The stupa has immense power 
uh, among which configure the creation of harmony and also the subduing of negative forces. That's actually a real, a real facet. Now, I'm gonna try and share my screen at this point so we can see one. I'm just gonna pull this up. Here we go. So this is a stupa. And this particular one is just outside Barcelona, which is funny as I saw that video last night. Uh, the two have come together in a strange way. The stupa have to be constructed in a very particular way. Um, one of the very striking uh, features that was explained to me in this particular case was that they had actually buried evil and negativity underneath the monument. And these actually included symbolically items related to crime and violence, real weapons that had been used. The power of the stupa placed on top of these items symbolizes the containment of evil and negative forces. So in my view, we too can contain negativity under the monument of our thoughts and achievements. We can turn those into a monument and stick them right on top of negative thinking. And I, I do actually usually keep a model of a stupa on my desk to remind me of this image, but I, I even so when I'm not there, I hold the image of the stupa in my head as a reminder in combating negativity. And perhaps you have an image of your own to remind you to bury negativity. I'll just stop the uh, screen share at this point. Hang on folks, just bear with me. There we go, I'll just get that back off and Okay, sorry about the controls here. I've not got the right zoom control in front of me. Here we go, stop the share. I can see you all any second, stop share. There we go, hopefully you can see me and I can see you. So the stupa sticks in my mind, um, but we can build up mental strength and resistance to negativity as I was saying, and it's just partly takes awareness and habit and uh, through being proactive and positive to, and resisting in a positive way. If you're actually feeling strong and secure, you can repel negativity, you can actually positively repel it. Uh, Carlene also reminded us about being a force for change. We can all try to be a force for good, to repel negativity. Carlene talked really powerfully to us about standing up and speaking out, repelling bad things. Um, we need to step up and resist the negative forces in my view, that are thrown into our path. And that's hard to do. I'd love to hear from you all in a minute as to how you, you actually do it. In terms of repelling negativity, it also helps me to know my own mind in advance, to be prepared. We do, well, it certainly helps me to have a clear uh, stock of responses and tactics in advance at the ready. And I carry these around like affirmations that can be rolled out when needed, perhaps to control ourselves and our thinking or to block negativity that's coming from others. I think uh, it was Therese that told us weeks ago that she now ignores, for example, the barbs of people close to her and turns them around and says, for example, uh, why don't you try it yourself? So she has stop responses that have helped her and she might talk about that if, we, if we're lucky today. Another idea, I think we can all do a personal audit to identify the sources of any negative thoughts we may be suffering from. We can actually search to see what we or other people have planted in those gardens of our mind, as I'll call them. We can actually throw light on the causes of our darkness before they arise. I think we really can do that. It's, it's not always obvious that they're there. If you've been, for example, exposed to negative or corrosive people for a long period, it can actually take time to rid the garden of those negative weeds. But you, you can do it, but you've got to be aware in the first place as to what's happened and the fact they're there. But we can, if we, if we can uproot these sources, this can reshape our entire thinking and make us more resistant. Um, it's very easy to become conditioned to negative bias without really even realizing that's happened to us. So we have to have our antenna up. And once again, why does it all matter? Well, as sure as the night follows the day, uh, in this particular context, negative attracts negative. It does not attract positive. Uh, in, in it, we might hear about magnets, but here I'm afraid, uh, we're talking about negative attracting negative, and that's critical to our understanding. As Ivier says, you've got to be careful which thoughts you let in and foster and brush away those negative thoughts from the door, as I've just said. Napoleon Hill tells us in uh, Chapter 7 of Think and Grow Rich what the 30, majors causes, 30 major causes of failure are. 
One of those is negative personality. And he says this, and I'll just read this piece out. There is no hope of success for the person who repels people through a negative personality. Success comes through the application of power and power is attained through the cooperative efforts of other people. A negative personality will not induce cooperation. Well, that's a great reminder of what negative negativity can do and also the fact that it can come from within us as well as from other people. I'm really beginning to believe, having read these and other great uh, quotes, that everything we do is rooted in enthusiasm. Uh, so enthusiasm is crucial and it's going to be killed by negativity if you're not careful. Let's just remember all the achievements um, and the love we're experiencing now are arising as a result of who we are and how we've been over many years, including not accepting negativity. Look at the stories of Evelyn, Carleen, Ivye, Bill, Hoong Sang and many, many others amongst us who, who are too numerous to name. We need to bear in mind also Napoleon Hill's reminder, the starting point of all achievement is desire. Let's reflect on that as well. How can we actually hope to build any desire and stick at it when our minds are full of negative thoughts or negative building materials? We're just embarking on so many great adventures here together, but to build desire, we need a fully stocked store of good materials and good tools. And these materials and tools are our thoughts. Thoughts are things, as he says, and we need, we need to be aware of that. They're precious, they're enabling if, if we foster the right ones. So negativity really, really does matter, and it will change our lives for the worse if we let it run riot. Its impact is so, so real. So uh, to use another image, let's rip out the negative plumbing and refurbish with new pipes. What else can we do? Well, I was listening to a marvellous lady speaking on BBC Radio Today programme the other day, um, she had been left on her own for some years and was suffering from anxiety as a result. And the way she decided to stop feeling anxious and having negative thoughts flood in was to think of someone else and help someone else. And it really motivated her. And that's what she said. So she spent her time going out into the community, helping other people. Uh, but no matter what happened, she always also took pride in her appearance every single day, no matter how bad she felt. And I thought that was incredibly powerful. And she is doing so much good in her own community. Another idea, um, one of the best ways of avoiding naysayers and negativity, whether it's internal or external, is just taking action. Do something. And John will say, just, just do it. Done. Doing something dispels negativity. It also really disproves directly naysayers just by the very fact of making progress. They say you can't do it, but every time you do something and every time you make progress or have a small win, you're disproving those naysayers and the doom mongers and also your own negative thoughts. You've actually done it. You've done something. It doesn't matter how small you've done it. Gradually, as a result, you, you're going to change because you now know you can do it. You can do things and you can see real tangible proof that you've done them. It will no longer then be if, but it'll be when and how can I do it? Uh, we can also become beacons of positivity. We can break negative chains uh, by inserting positive thoughts into those chains and breaking them. Um, we don't have to just retransmit negativity. It's so easy just to retransmit without thinking. The subconscious retreat, we, retweets that I referred to earlier on. We can then create new chains of our own. Uh, there's just no better way of combating negativity and we're seeing so much of it. There's a lot of it around at the moment. Probably always has been, but I just feel particularly sensitive to it at, at present. So I'm sorry this has been a, a rapid tour, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and your experiences. I mean, how do you combat or resist negativity? How do you eradicate it? Um, how do you protect your beautifully constructed efforts and your dreams? Has negativity held any of you back? Is it still holding you back? Um, are we unwittingly amplifying negativity and broadcasting it? Can you break this? Can you break this chain? Um, do you retain any particular images in your head to help you combat negativity as, as I retain the stupor in my head. Um, have you adopted any pre-prepared tactics to, to combat negativity or, or done a personal audit, for example? And are you aware of your state of mind? Do you feel that you're in touch with it or perhaps not? So before opening the floor, um, I just say really walk tall, dress in technicolor dreams, outrageous dreams if possible. Let's just repel and quash negativity. Um, I'll leave you sitting 
in a lighthouse with a grand storm raging around outside it and the lighthouse beacon shining on in all directions. We're the lighthouse keepers and we can switch on and off that light whenever we choose to and fracture the gloom. We really, really can. So at this point, I would love to hear from you all and love to open the floor. Uh, Carlene has, has a hand up, which is wonderful. Wonderful to hear from you, Carlene. Hello, Adrian. Hello, everyone. Um, my video is off because I'm still multitasking with the little one who's been poorly. And last week when she fell ill, it was very, um, how should I put it? It just, was, it became, everything just got on top of me because out of nowhere, she just basically came down with really high fever. And we didn't know what to do after the first day. We thought, oh, this is probably just, you know, just a regular flu. It's going to go away. Um, but the symptoms got worse. And then eventually when we had to take her to the GP, they were not allowing anyone to come in. So what they did, they call you over the phone. So they contact you via telephone and they get you to do what they would normally do in surgery. So you have to shine a light down her throat, get her to say, ah, while the GP is on the other end walking you through what to do. And it's, 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 it's so different because this is something that we're not used to. So all the changes and having to go through all the procedures um, in a different way, in a different manner, and not actually having the professional there with you, but having to do it and thinking, am I doing the right thing? So anyway, we got through that. The GP emailed the prescription to the pharmacy or the chemist, they call it over here. And we were able to get the uh, medication for her. And luckily she started to improve by day five. Um, and all throughout that, it was like a lot of sleepless nights, couldn't even function, but I always tried to see if I can get on the call. I missed a few days, but it became where it became like, um, where you, you start thinking to yourself, your fear and the anxiety would start to override the positivity and the hope and negativity started to play a big, big part in like help making you feel more panicked than normal. And at those times you want to remain calm. You want to remain, you know, have your mind clear so you can be making the right decisions and not obviously panic and go into, is it cold? Is it COVID? Do you know, because this is what everyone's doing now. So Having, um, I had an app installed and I installed the app and it was an app that would every hour give you affirmations. And when I tell you the affirmations would come like every half an hour to an hour, your phone will just ding. And I would just, when I hear the ding, because the ding is very different. It's a distinct sound. It's not like a regular text or the other notifications that your phone gets. There's a distinct sound. So, you know, it's the affirmations coming through. And sometimes I didn't even need to look at the phone. But the distinct ding was enough to just perk me. And then I probably would be in the middle of a task and I'd say, oh, here comes my affirmation. And then I'd glance over and it would be affirmations like, I am going to get through this. It's so strange, Adrian. I'm, I'm telling you this, right? These are basic generic affirmations. But when I tell you it's coming through and it's everyone is like a message that you need at that moment. And then it makes you realize how important it is to have the constant positive affirmations, despite the fact that you think, oh, this is something I know this. I've seen it before. It is very powerful to be constantly reminded to remain focused, to remain strong, to remain composed, to just remain in a state of just um, have a positive mindset. And when the positive mindset, when you start to now it's like a programming. I don't know. It, it, it does it sound crazy because it's it, to me. I've never done this before. But the positive affirmations are helping your mind unlearn a lot of things that you didn't know you'd learned. And I'm going to look for the app. I'm going to find the name. I'm going to post it in the chat because it was something that just popped up just out of nowhere. But these things come to you at the right time. And then I was thinking, right? I think we need to start getting all these positive affirmations put on everything from milk cartons, right? To nappies. Because I remember when I had my daughter and I was like a, a new mom and struggling sometimes with feeding and teething and everything. You have to do nappy changes. And it's those moments when you need to see positive affirmations, even if it's on a diaper, because it, 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 it's something you need all around you at all times. It will help many people so if we can get those things on milk cartons, on toothbrush holders, on, on, on your washing up liquid, on your um, laundry tabs, everywhere you can post those things, 
when you never know who it's going to, who needs it at that moment, who is going to reach at that right time, because be, without knowing it, some people are struggling and just that ding, just that positive affirmation is enough to pull them up and help them to keep going now more than ever. So that's what I wanted to share. That's one of those things that helped me with negativity. And I, I honestly, I've never experienced this before in my life. So I can attest that it works. It definitely does. Charlene, that is amazing. You're sounding so positive and powerful. I tell you, I tell you, every time we hear you, you just boost everybody. You certainly boost me. Um, taking each of those, those ideas. I mean, the first one, absolutely brilliant. I'd love to know more about it. As I said, I, th I think you need these things just to remind yourself sometimes when you can just begin to drift imperceptibly. That is a great way of bringing you back on course. And as you said, you had an, almost an automatic reaction just hearing the ding. Um, Cyril helpfully posted in the chat that it's the Pavlovian theory. It's Pavlov's dog. When uh, when a certain thing happened, the dog reacted a certain way. And, and, and uh, yeah, it, it definitely mentally we react to cues. Um, the trouble is those can be negative cues too. So let's remember that. Some, some things that we've had a bad experience over give us a, a negative mental cue. So that's something else to watch out for. But brilliant idea having an app that can just uh, bring you back on track. Um, you know, let's face it, none of this is easy. What we're all going through and the adventures we're going through are tough. We've had some very bad days. I know people have struggled and had a really bleak day. Um, we need things to keep us going. It's a long-term project, long haul. Neil and Jane have been through the mill. They've had pirates attacking their products. They've had bad days. They've had great days. I'm sure they would tell us it's a real roller coaster. Um, so we need that positive stuff. I, I love that, Colleen. And I love the idea of putting this on to milk cartons and products. I think that is absolutely brilliant. So where do we start? Carleen, where do we start? Who do we have to lobby? We'll have to wait to see who gets elected before we can do anything in the States. We should um, do it with, we're all entrepreneurs. We should start putting it on our products, every single one, did. no matter what. There you go. Well, that's a great way of starting. Yeah, I think that's a brilliant way of starting. I, I just love the idea of that. It, there's just too much uh, negative uh, vibe being spread. If we can put, spread some positive vibe and some positive thoughts, what a great thing we could do. I think that's absolutely brilliant. I love it. Thank you so much, Carly. Thanks for that. So if anyone has any thoughts on that, I'd love to hear those. And Joe and Gina have their hands up. Hi, Joe and Gina. Great to see you, Gina. We haven't seen you for a while. We haven't seen you either, Joe. Thank you. I am so happy to be here. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you so, so, so much for that thought, Carlene. Um, I'm going to put up positive affirmations on all my products from now on, that's for sure. Um, I know that uh, through the secret, they teach you that if you think negative thoughts, negative thoughts come to you. If you think positive thoughts, positive thoughts come to you. So if anybody ever has a negative thought, even if they say, I don't want to miss this show, or I don't want to have a car crash, or I don't want to do that, you're actually bringing the negativity into yourself. So you can't do the don't want things. You just have to do what you want. And the positive thing will come to you. It really does. It, it's amazing how our brains are so much more powerful than we're using uh, at this point. We, we can actually do things that we don't even know that we can do with, with our brains. And motivational enrichment um, with the books and these, these meetings and communicating with each other and the affirmations, these things will help so much. Um, I kind of, I remember Tony Robbins when we were in one of his sessions he had said to whenever you're dealing with something, whether it's a bad habit or a negativity or whatever it is, give yourself something that you'll, re you'll redo over and over and over again until you get to a point where every time you see or hear that thing, you just snap out of it subconsciously. So what Carlene was saying was basically that, that it wasn't necessarily the bleep on the phone, but that's what it turned out to be. So now every time she hears that, it's going to throw the negativity out. You know, so it doesn't have to be a beep. Like sometimes Joe will get really negative and, you know, I might just stick my tongue out at him and he'll laugh, you know, I mean, just to break it up, you know, or, or I'll, I'll punch him in the arm or something stupid like that, you know, or he'll spank me or whatever. Some stupid little thing, you know, that just knocks you out. You can't be mad anymore. You have to, you can't be negative anymore. You have to finally start laughing about it. So if we could find little things that could be fun to just knock each other out, we could be accountable to each other, which I think would be helpful too. But um, in today's society, we just have to try a little bit harder and uh, combat everything. And eventually we'll get things back the way they were. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to me and uh, giving you all the input that I can I can use. <laughs> yeah, I got to put my two cents in. Two cents. You know, one, yeah, 
one of the things that uh, uh, really uh, uh, you know worked for me is uh, uh, partly uh, joy and, and actually uh, uplifted is uh, helping out at the church, volunteering, and uh, just the uh, the influx you get from other people, you know, the the positives, helping other and, people. you know, just helping other people out. It's like wow, you know, it just takes you up. You know, like a hundred feet in the air. Mm -hmm. um, it's you know, we're getting more. You know, I keep telling people I'm getting more out of it than what you are. I keep coming up and say, you know, thank you for helping out. I say, no, 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 thank you for letting me. You guys have really uplifted me. You make me feel that much better about doing this. And uh, you know, that's just my two cents for today. Five cents. Five cents. Ah. <laughs> I get three cents. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> get a race. <laughs> Your thoughts all day. That just. Uh, makes everyone feel better. I, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, Joe, it, 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 there's nothing like trying to help other people. You just get such yep. an enormous uh, pleasure from it. Yes, as you say, they're helping you in the end. Um, yeah. uh, as that lady was saying, she was suffering terrible anxiety and just got out there and started helping and, and she's never been in the trouble with it since. Uh, never mm -hmm. happened again. There just was a lady in our church. Uh, there was a lady in our church that was homeless and she used to come to our, our social events and um, you know, I, I kind of liked her. I kind of felt kind of sorry, like I wanted to bring her home with me. <laughs> and I, I mentioned to somebody, I said, can we just like help this woman find a place or give her some, some place to go or whatever? Oh, no, 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 no. She kind of sneaks in and does things and, you know, she hides in the corner and stuff. So anyway, I was thinking like the poor lady, all she wanted to do was just help other people and try and find connection. Which sometimes when you're homeless, people chase you away, you know? But when you go to a community where people are asking for volunteers, she was volunteering. And she was helping out and doing this and doing that and wanting to be a part of it. And I'm thinking now that's probably what she was doing to try and survive, you know, just to like be part of something positive instead of her negative world. That's, you yeah, know. that's terribly sad, but absolutely, absolutely. We need to include people. Um, I think a lot of people have never been exposed to helping other people. They've just never had the chance to join in any initiatives. When you've actually done something like that, you, you suddenly realize the true meaning of it and the value of it. Uh, that's yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. That's absolutely right. And just it, COVID it, takes it away a lot. You know, yeah. we, we're, we're so isolated and I miss it. I mean, I, I just love being with other people and, you know, sharing and doing. I'm Italian, so I'm always cooking and trying to invite people over and do things, that's you know, lovely. but I mean, it just, it just feels so lonely when you can't do that anymore. So I just well, can't wait to get back. Isolation, yeah, isolation, yeah. especially as we've seen through this whole pandemic, uh, can just immediately start creating hor horrible negative feelings. Horrible things, a lot yeah. Of people suffered terrible things during the lockdowns, uh, and they still still are. So you're absolutely right. If you can break that isolation and just connect, yeah, all the more it. reason to go back to where it was, right? More yeah. motivation. <laughs> and have, you battled, cheer, cheer. have you been battling at all negative thoughts, Gina? I, I think in the group, um, people are valiantly taken on a lot. No, nobody quite realized how difficult some of these uh, new ventures were going to be. Yeah. Uh, you um, to overcome that and battle it yourself? I ba I basically am, am I have, uh, so many of my friends are saying, you need to be, including my husband, you need to be careful. You need to not be so, you know, so, so lack days ago. So and I'm thinking, well, I'm sorry, I have a positive attitude. I just spent a week, 12 hours a day at the largest boat show in the world selling food. Okay. And I'm fine. So, okay. Maybe the hospitals are supposed to be crowded. Maybe everybody you look at has COVID, but maybe my positivity got me past it. I mean, I don't really know. And I felt good doing it because it made people happy and it made me happy. And I was with a whole bunch of people and it was just in a great environment. And um, I don't know, it's it just like, it's hard to say, but sometimes being afraid of something can draw it to you. It seems like if you're afraid of divorce, you're afraid of being sick or you're afraid of something, it seems to come closer than if you say, I'm not getting that. There's no way I can get that. It's not even there. It's not even real, you know? And some people say you're being really dangerous by the way you think, but you know, it's gotten me this far. So I'm just not going to give in to all this stuff. I don't, I just think it's as far as coronavirus, I think most of it's just basically hype and it's just a virus. I'll get through it like everybody else. I think it's a great attitude, Gina, really. I mean, you're right. If you live in fear the whole time and frightened of your own shadow, that, that can certainly breed the wrong kind of thoughts. And we're, we're all on a positive track. We've got to stay positive because this isn't easy. Absolutely. We have to put effort in. We can only put that extra effort in when the tough when the going gets really tough, if we're feeling right. okay and feeling good about it. 
absolutely. Where we're going. So I, I absolutely agree with you. Brilliant. Well, there you go, folks. Between Joe and Gina and Carlene, we'll, we'll be powered on like a rocket. I think we we just need to <laughs> some of that, and we'll be uh, we'll be away. And I'm I'm not seeing any other hands today. No one has anything to say about uh, combating negativity. Uh, Stuart, there we go. Stuart's put his hand up. I'd love to hear from you, Stuart. Oh my God, Team Tuesday, baby, rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> awesome session today, man. Uh, fantastic. I think, you know, this is just a recurring subject. Um, and, and I think in large part, because this is a recurring experience for all of us, right? And, and you know, John has said that we all need reminders. Um, many, of, uh, many of the discussions that we had have had on these general sessions all come back to mindset, mental diet, positive attitude, how to dispel negativity, right? Because these are the things or at least one of the greatest obstacles um, to our success, to our happiness, to achieving our goals, things like that. Um, you know, you, you asked, uh, I think you asked Gina, uh, you know, do you, uh, do you combat negativity in your daily life? I, I feel like that there is a, almost like the media onslaught that you were talking about. I think vibrationally outside of our individual fields, let's say, there's a constant onslaught, uh, assault, if you would, um, on our mindset, on our mental state, on our health, right? And, uh, you know, the, the discussion we had a couple months back on mental diet um, and how, um, you know, we choose to entertain negativity, negative thoughts, we choose to consume them or not, right? And, you um, if it's a fleeting momentary kind of like uh, uh, the gnat, you know, uh, uh, was it Ivy that was talking about sweeping it away? I kind of do the tennis racket or the shoe fly kind of thing. I really, I liked what, uh, what Gina was talking about, about not acknowledging the negative aspect of these things, right? Because it goes back to like, oh, I want to be successful. Or, uh, you know, when you start using words like that, um, you attract the state right? You, stack, you attract the want of things as opposed to the having of things. You attract the state of not wanting to be this, and that, that becomes a permanent state as opposed to um, assuming the feeling of positivity, right? If you, if you ever have questions about uh, your health or where, you're, or where you're feeling or whatever, right, it's easy to kind of get into that negative rabbit hole even in the, in the attempt to combat those negative thoughts, right? And sometimes we, we were our own undoing in those things, um, as opposed to assuming the state of health or happiness or success, right? And instead of this kind of, I want this, I want that, we are that, we have that, all things um, are in existence uh, uh, all at the same time. Dude, you rock on so many levels. Um, you were talking about the awareness, having the awareness of your thoughts, right? And I think that's kind of the first step is, oh, puppy, Joe and Gina. Um, yeah, you know, thinking about thinking, right? That's called metacognition, right? And this concept of just being aware of our thought processes. And it's almost like when you talk about any other malady, right? It's really acknowledging that there's a problem or acknowledging that there are these out, outside influences, right? Um, you talked about the media and, and this constant barrage of, of negativity, right? And I think there's a certain, for those of us that, that do uh, indulge in, in media for whatever reasons, I think it's important to have sort of a, a literacy, if you would, or, or um, a perspective about these things to almost watch it from, uh, you know, from a, a, a half a step back or, or, or many steps back. Um, you mentioned negativity bias. Right? And that's like a real thing. Um, negativity bias, if, if you guys haven't heard of it, you should check it out. But essentially, it's, it says that our brains are more wired to hold on to negative thoughts. And it kind of goes back to our primal, uh, uh, you know, cave days where, you know, we, we have to be on constant, um, on constant watch for dangers and things like that. Um, and since we don't have uh, saber tooths and uh, you know other things uh, to worry about. Let's say um, our brain finds other things to worry about, right? So this is kind of the 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 psychology or the the physiology 
behind the psychology, right? So I think it's interesting to understand where this stuff comes from so that we can sort of say, okay, yeah, I got it. You know, I think some of the books that we've read talk about how do you address negative thoughts, right? And, and this con some people have talked about kind of acknowledging, but saying, okay, thank you very much. That's nice, you know, off you go. Or, or, you know, some people do a shut the hell up to your inner voice or whatever it is, right? And we all have different techniques. And I, I think over the course of the day, I probably employ, you know, a dozen different techniques to, to dispel negativity. And, and so as much of a positive person as I believe myself to be and know myself to be, I still feel like it's a, it's a constant uh, battle to, to deal with outside influences, right? Um, I like your, your concept of, uh, you know, replacing a negative with two positives. And there's a couple things I want to say about that. Like, I want to science it for a second, because when you talk about waves, right, and you talk about thought waves, um, you have what's called interference patterns and things like that, right? And so you have this one wave that's doing this. And if you can match that wave, it cancels out. Right, so one wave will cancel out another. So that's why you got to go one positive to cancel out the negative. Then you got to go with another positive to overwrite the negative to, to create a whole new uh, uh, thought pattern. So I really like that. Um, we talked last week about electromagnetism, right? And and to me, like part of repelling and dispelling negativity comes from the understanding that I actually have. We all have this luminous body of energy around us that can either um, allow things to come in that is harmful to us or to repel the things, right? And it has to do with our vibration. It has to do with our, our mental state, right? And so if we can uh, keep our uh, electromagnetic field through our thoughts um, in a positive state, then nothing can harm us. We talked last night about being guardians to the gateway of your mind, right? All that kind of stuff, right? These, this is the greatest responsibility that we have to ourselves, right? Is to, is to be aware and discerning of, of the things we let into our sphere. Um, and the last thing I wanna, oh, and I wanna say that when you're talking about replacing things with thoughts, I think it's important to remember that we need to emote these things as well, right? Because there's only so much that a thought will do, but we all know that through Napoleon Hill and all these other uh, authors uh, and scientists have been telling us, right, the key is to actually emote. So it's one thing to be like, oh, I'm happy. It's another thing to feel that, to put that picture in your mind of whatever it is, you know, laying on the beach in a lounge chair, wherever your happy place is, or your happy, right, to actually feel that because we know that there is a heart brain connection. The thoughts we have are sent to our heart, which then creates this field around us, right? It's all tied together. And then dude, stupas, how awesome. Thank you for bringing that up. That is so cool. Um, here in New Mexico, we have the second largest population per capita of Tibetan llamas outside of Tibet. And so just a couple miles down the road from me is a Tibetan stupa that I had the privilege of watching get erected. And I live next door to uh, uh, an ordained Tibetan Lama for many years, um, Lama Tudrak, and another one named Lama Dorje. Super cool dudes. I would see them up in the mountains with the llamas, and the big joke was Lama, 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 Lama. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well done. Great job today, man. Uh, thanks, Stuart. That was, that was an absolutely great summary, as usual, and lots of ideas for us all to digest. And you're a beacon to us all, Stuart, that's for sure. Just you just emit positivity and, and, and positive thought wherever you go. So thank you so much for being there for all of us um, every day. Um, Nikki has her hand up. Hi, Nikki. We're, well, you're on mute there. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Now, hi, thank you. Adrian, it's an amazing topic. Um, I, just like it sort of hits me direct because I know this is my subjects, it's written all over me. I've actually um, uh, almost put my hand down because Stuart talked about his force field and that's literally the same thing I'm just gonna mention is that I'm actually quite good at dealing with um, negative things that happen and the sort of day-to-day -day stuff. And, that, and I'm realizing more and more as I get older that uh, I've not only planted and watered and encouraged and nurtured negativity inside me and it's been you know, since I was a child. And, and so my, um, my task actually is dragging that out as much as anything else. But my picture that I was given many years ago, somebody said to try and imagine 
negative things that seem to happen against me. Um, imagine I was standing under a big net like a birdcage, so the force field, if you're um, Stuart, of course, and doing it scientifically, and only allow in the things that actually do relate to yourself and anything else, just, just let it hang out there because it's not for you. And I find that quite a useful, um, you know, if I, I have arguments with my daughter, I mean, who doesn't? And, you know, but sometimes afterwards I think, well, you know, some of that's okay, I can take that on. And other words, I just think, do you know what, that's just teenage, what, and I'm going to let it drop. <laughs> and um, and so I think that sort of cage sort of thing, or the net thing can, can also be helpful if you're not wanting to go down the force field route. <laughs> Thank you. That's a Thank lovely you. image, Nikki. And, and yeah, yeah, deal with what we can and deal with what matters, really, because if we try and deal with everything, we'll just get overwhelmed. And then we'll immediately start feeling negative because we, we're crushed. Uh, the great thing is, though, Nikki, that this is something we can actually change. This is not something that's baked in. None of us are permanently negative. We choose to be or remain negative. We can actually change it. We can really do this. So that, that's why I think this is such an important topic for any aspiring entrepreneur or anyone else for that matter. But th thanks for that lovely image and those thoughts, Nikki. Thank you. And Mandy has a hand up. Hi, Mandy. Uh, we're about to hear from Mandy as well this week on her new book club, which is very exciting, Mandy. <laughs> Yeah, get ready for it. Yeah, we're going to be doing persistence again, aren't we? We're going to do that one. Are you going to join us or are you staying on yours? I'll try. I'll try. Yes, I can only do so many of them. I'm, uh, I ducked out of last night because I, I had an early an early uh, finish, but uh, I will try and join you, Mandy. It's, I'm so glad that you've taken that on because not only is it great to have things in other time zones, but you're going to be great at doing it. So I'm looking forward to hearing you and, and talking. Okay, yeah. It will be good. I hope so. And what I want to say is I'm really into um, current affairs. Um, and so I do listen to, I don't watch the television news, I don't like seeing pictures of things certain times, but I do listen to the radio a lot, and I listen to talk radio, like Radio 4 and LBC, um, and so we have negativity for ourselves, but it's a bit like Stuart was saying, the world at the moment is so negative, and that is rubbing off on all of us. Um, I think what the states are going through at the moment with the election is what we went through with Brexit, where there was so much hatred between people who wanted it, people who didn't want it. And I think what we need to do is start to listen to people a bit more again. We all need to realise that others do have different views and that others are allowed to have different views and they're not all necessarily the same as ours. And that's what free speech is about. Um, everybody looks at the world from a different way. Um, and so just because I may not have wanted Brexit, the person that doesn't want Brexit doesn't mean that they're bad or they're wrong or anything because they're seeing it through their view of life. When you listen to the radio and people phoning up and they're saying, oh, we don't want this, it gets, you can get you very angry. At the moment, they're talking about whether school should be closing down at the moment for COVID and my son's doing his GCSEs or supposed to be doing his GCSEs next year. Well, you've got people up north whose children haven't had a chance to get their work done, whereas my son has been doing his work because down here they've got more provision. They have been using their PCs, recognising that it's trying not to let it get you angry and that other people do have a view. Because sometimes we forget to listen, we forget. It's just, no, this is our view. You must have the same view as we have because it's my view and only my view is right. And we're very, we don't change fast enough sometimes. We just think, no, nope, that's it. Um, I think the other way to do it though also at the moment is to count our blessings. I have been counting my blessings through COVID. We haven't been impacted by it that much. Um, and my biggest blessing at the moment is that children don't get affected by it. Um, and that to me is just so important. I, I, I might see it differently if I thought my son that could get affected by it. But for us that have got younger children, know that our children are 90% of the time going to be OK. It's so important. And then the last thing what I have been doing recently when I have found that the news has just been too much, I go and ask Alexa to play Bright Side of the Road by Van Morrison. So anybody who doesn't know that, it's a really uplifting tune and it's danced around the kitchen. Um, and it, it just, yeah. And he, I, <laughs> look on the bright side of life I thought that might be going a bit <laughs> from life with Brian but I thought that might be going a bit too far <laughs> but bright side of the road is really good so yeah that's my little bit love it Mandy love it yeah music's important yes I love that particular film it's a crazy scene but it, again uh, it has been sung by people in desperate situations uh, in the past and yeah why not a good sing song a bit of a dance or some music things like that can really dig us out of a temporary uh, bad feeling um that, that's for sure and listening to others i agree so important it's this two two ears and one mouth discussion we've been having over the last couple of weeks i, I think stuart mentioned that as well a, a few days ago um 
you know, we've got two ears to listen with and, and we've got to listen. Uh, it's hard though, we get fixed views, but let's bring a bit of humanity back into it and try and bring things back down, as Gina said, to where they used to be and, uh, and try and open things up again because we've had some very divisive times in various countries over the last couple of years, particularly with Brexit, with now with COVID and all these terrible things that have torn at everyone's communities. We've got to rebuild. We're sure we've got to rebuild. I agree with you. Um, yeah, I, I love that, Mandy. Thank you. And we're, so we we'll look forward to hearing you. Uh, I think it's tomorrow you're doing it from memory. Tomorrow yeah, you're... 9, 9 p.m. Wednesday, 9 p.m. in the UK. Yeah, but everybody in the US is allowed to, it's okay to join as well if they can't make the US time. Everyone can dial in. So it's on your US version of your calendar, the time for the US, and the British calendar's got the um, English European time on it. So hopefully everyone will be there. Thank you, yeah. Mandy. Uh, Cyril has his hand up. He's been waiting very patiently. Hi, how are you doing? Okay. Yeah, how are you doing, Cyril? Cool. Uh, great. Um, great topic. I always like this topic. Um, uh, I must admit, I, I am I am so pleased that I did the amount of work I did on this so many years ago because it's paying off now. Most of the time, um, the only stuff I have to be careful of is the insipid stuff that kind of creeps up on you from behind. Um, and even having less of that recently. But I do realize that actually kind of COVID in some ways is buffering me because I'm alone so much. And uh, you guys are really helping to kind of keep me positive as well. But um, but what's nice is I um, that I the the amount of work I've done just keeps out a lot of this the the stuff, which is great. And plus, also I must admit that um, having sung in my gospel choir for years, I mean, I think we started it in about mm, 1998 or something around that. No, well, it was a bit later than that. It was about 2000 something. Um, and uh, singing always makes me feel great. It's great to get it out. It's uh, very cathartic. And then also, I used to love the fact that how we used to sing at a lot of charity gigs, um, or when we're when we're up and running anyway. We 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 often sing at a lot of charity gigs and for some churches around London, and for uh, we get invited to a, a lot of things as well and um, charity gigs. And I find find that very therapeutic, as Joe was saying. The, um, I mean, for me, it's a pleasure to sing anyway. And then I get the, 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 the other one of feeling as though I'm actually maybe giving something as well. So, uh, yes. And then, well, the dancing always makes me feel, well, doesn't always, because usually I just get frustrated with myself after about an hour or so, because I can't remember all that I've learned. But, um, but that's another story. <laughs> all right. Yeah, my, my, my five cents were. Thank you. <laughs> Cyril, that's great. And, uh, you know, doing those things that give us pleasure, that's that's a great way of tackling it. I, I, I absolutely agree. Um, Sharon would tell us, I'm sure, but music, music's incredibly powerful. There was another article on the radio overnight about the power of music for people suffering from dementia, which is another facet. So even when you, you've, you've um, lost some of your faculties, uh, it can still get through. It's amazing that music can still get through to you, even though you've lost part of your function. So there is something you... deeply rooted in it. Yeah. Did you see the um, uh, BBC um, uh, report on a a UK gentleman of about that's eighty? Yeah, that's the one. He got a one million yeah. donation. That's the guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And uh, basically, he he uh, because he was a musician and a teacher, a music teacher, and even one of his students became very famous in terms of that. Um, he's in a, a, a really well-known rock band. Can't remember which one. Um, and um, the fact that he used to improvise and his son got him to improvise, they taped it and uh, it became a viral sensation. And then uh, which, which symphony orchestra brought it up and actually decided the, to do? The, the, the symphony and that got it to the attention of a Scottish um, billionaire or multimillionaire who's given a million. Yeah. To, to totally. The, yeah. Really, really wonderful. Amazing. Really. Story. Uh, he could only deal he was he was given four notes he could only deal with four notes or that was the idea so he no, no 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 that no it was it was it was an improvisation on four notes and it, yeah because yeah, it's basically yeah. a lot like jazz kind of that because yeah, you often exactly. find it's a good starting point to start from a yeah. a, a decreased position because it opens you up to more right okay so it was uh, that was an incredible story and powerful music dancing uh, habib has talked to us about dancing around and uh, always dancing and laughing. Great, great way of, of dealing with things. I couldn't agree more. Laughter is so, so important in this. So that is, uh, 
That is great. Thanks for those thoughts, Cyril. Um, Sylvia's had a hand up for a while as well. Sylvia, um, she's just coming off her mute there. Great to see you with us again, Sylvia. Thank you. I just wanted to say um, I logged in and listened to your talk the other day, Stuart, on I wasn't live, but I listened afterwards on um, the doors. I love doors. Um, and then the analogy today of sweeping before you open a door, I think, is so powerful. Just, just to give yourself that mental moment of sweeping before you open that door so that you can arrange your thoughts so that whatever you meet on the other side of the door, uh, you have control over how you receive it. Um, and then just the other one thing I want to say, I have a blackboard behind me that I wrote quotes on, just little things that I come across. And I haven't been able to wipe this one off because it's so powerful. So um, simple, if you change the way you look at things, the, the way you look at things change. And I, I can't wipe that one off. I read it every single day and it gives me pause. And you, you just think about it and it's so very true. Change the way you look at things and the, look, the way you look at things change. Like it's just, it's just amazing. And I just have to bring that up. Thank you everybody for a great talk today. That's Love always, it. Thanks. I know you've struggled as everyone else has with terrible Amazon uh, algorithms. <laughs> Yeah. You need that kind yeah. of mindset just to get through that sometimes it's mm -hmm. such a lot of obstacles mm -hmm. thrown in your way you need that mindset so uh, well done and thanks for sharing that with us that the doorstep is is the great Ivier who, yeah. who Love it. wonderful Love sweeping it. away image that's what she does she does not allow any negative thoughts to get in in the first mm -hmm. place which is great mm -hmm. thanks Sylvia welcome. Khaled welcome back you've got your hand up as well lovely to see you again hi how are you very well. Good, good, to, good to hear from you. Good, good, good. Good, good. Thanks. Um, two things I um, struck me today. Um, what Stuart said that anything we learn from news or um, whatever the, the social media, not to just accept it straight away. Just think about it. Think about it before you accept it and make a comment. And another thing Mandy said that why can't you accept my view, what I think? about Brexit, I, yeah, I, um, why don't you accept that I have my own opinion as well? These two things really, really like helping me. I'm struggling a bit around recently what's happening around the world. Personally, I'm really fine, uh, you know, a lot of things. But around the world, what's happening, it's uh, quite hard to accept. I'm, I'm quite an emotional person sometimes. Um, I, I was having a conversation with one of my, one of my cousins what's happening around the world and he's saying uh, how could this happen why are people doing this i was like just because people are doing something wrong you don't go and show something even worse and trigger it even worse and make make it and show people actually you're worse because because you're vulnerable sometimes and people will take try to take advantage through media yeah through this through that it, it, if you react to that and and then then obviously that's where you're showing your 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 your, your weakness and and you, you're showing that yeah what people thinking is you're right but it's not so not always we straight away should react the way um Stuart uh, just described like if you listen to something or see something don't just say it all the time out oh, it could be you're not seeing the full picture and that's really something really helped me today i'm 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 struggling a bit recently what's happening around the world. It's, it shouldn't happen. It, COVID, that, everything recently, especially in 2020, and now everything happening around Europe, it's just disturbing and it's just triggering one thing to other and, and media just portraying what people want to, probably not want to see or listen, but it's just portraying in a way, it's creating hatreds among Every, all people were well, all human beings, but it's sometimes I feel like why people can't just get on with, with their differences. You're, you're, you're not the same. I'm, I'm, I'm Asian, you're black, you're white. Just get on with your life. You know, your belief, live with your belief. I respect you. You, you, don't, you, you didn't want to leave, uh, you, didn't, you, you, you didn't want to leave um, the Europe, Brexit, but I, I wanted to leave. So, you know, why can't we just say, okay, my thought is my thought. And I, 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 I have right to think what I think. 
people don't think that and it's, it's really struggle at this moment around the world what's happening and that's why creating a lot of negativity it's just not just not it's disturbing it, it hurts people yeah Khalid, that's we, what I want we, to say. we feel you on that really i mean there's so much of this around um We've got to bring humanity back into it. We've got to try to understand each other. It's a tough job. Democracy is not perfect. Uh, there will always be people with a different view. So we have to find an accommodation. And, and, and that, that was uh, when I was talking about the media chain, we are part of the transmission mechanism. And we are actually either going to retransmit and retweet subconsciously bad stuff. Or we can I almost stopped, almost stopped listening to uh, listening yeah. to news because it's just sometimes um, a lot of negativity. I, I listen to like orthodox news and like someone's playing a piano and listening like people listening. Or recently, I, uh, I saw a news that a guy had dementia and he played a piano and you know people listening and started joining online. And you know, I I listen to that kind of things. I listen to how can we protect yeah the environment. How can we protect the the, the world? Uh, I listen to more about um more, David Atom Atom what he's saying. Uh, not 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 always listening to BBC or Fox News because it's just fabricated most of the time. Listen to things. It helps us. Listen. How can we protect the the, yeah. the world? Yeah, you're right, Khalid. Look for the good stories. That's what I was saying. You, but you've got to dig deep. You've got to dig deep through all the bad stuff because it's so easy to print sloppy articles or negative articles without putting the other side of the story. That's that's an easy thing to throw out and sell. Um, it takes more effort on the part of the people producing some of these stories to, to, to put the, the thing in a more rounded context and, and actually show the other side. So, yeah, you've got to dig deep, but uh, it's worth doing it. It's worth doing it. And we can all change what's being transmitted around. We really can just by not thoughtlessly putting out negative stuff that isn't going to help anybody. Well, we're, we've reached the top of the hour, folks. And Khalid, thanks for your contribution there. It was great to hear from you, and I hope you'll speak more, and it's, it's always lovely to hear you. And everyone today, fantastic thoughts. And, you know, I just really feel that there's so much positivity bubbling away in this group that if we put it all together, we can start to chip in and do things. And I, I go straight back to Carly, and I love that idea of putting positive thoughts on packaging, etc. Let's really think about that. What a great way of uh, starting the ball rolling. Um, let's not forget housekeeping wise as well. Today, uh, Stuart's doing a, a very early session, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time, Stuart, uh, which is in two hours. So in two hours, Stuart is holding his adventures in mindset rather than later in the evening. Um, also, Ivier with her wonderful corporate curios stories today at 5 p.m eastern time which i think is 10 p.m uk time so don't forget that that's a second one of a new session which was absolutely fantastic and pretty mind-boggling last week if you've listened to it so let's see what ivier has got to tell us later and stuart of course always incredible storyteller and thought-provoking person so looking forward to hearing both of them it's a real series of treats uh, this afternoon thank you so much for joining today and uh, great to have you all there. Let's go and be positive. I know it's a turbulent world this week in various places, but let's uh, let's stay positive and really fight for that. Take care and have, have a great finish to the uh, to the week. Bye, thank everybody. you, Adrian. Yeah, thanks thank a lot. Bye, everybody. Bye. bye, bye, bye. Thank you, Adrian. Thanks, Adrian. Bye. bye. Really enjoyed that. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. bye. bye.